and simultaneously working on strengthening knees, ankles, hips. So of course we've done a warm up, but just in case we haven't done enough, we're gonna step our feet a bit apart with the toes pointing toward the outside. We're going to test to make sure the middle of the knee is coming over the middle of our foot. We're gonna do some sunflowers. Arms up, if we wanna do just a gentle one, we don't have to bring the arms all the way overhead. We're gonna bend and squat down, it might be just a little bit. But if we want to, we'll bring the hands all the way up. And then as we spread the sunflowers down to the ground, We'll stretch high to the sky, bending at the knees, squatting down, pedals dragging along the ground before we stretch high to the sky. Watching where the knee is going in relationship to the foot. And the next time we come up, we're going to bring our feet together, inner edges of the feet parallel, feet flat on the ground. We should be able to pick up the toes so that we know we're balanced across the ball and the heel of the foot. And we're going to do our forward fold. We make sure that we're doing our pelvic tilt so the tailbone's moving behind us. The bony part, the iliac crest, is coming forward. If we want to work with our breath, we can come down the first time just plant our hands on our thighs and bring our head even with our hips. Come up again, making sure arms come out to the side before we bend forward again. Or we can come straight down as low as our arms will allow, our hamstrings will allow. We want to make sure that we're not rolling back under the heels of the foot are coming forward that we have a straight line from our hips through our knees down through the middle of the foot if we can reach the floor that's great if not our hands are going to be touching something our shins tops of our toes maybe even up on our thighs if we easily reach the floor we're thinking about walking the hands further back so we're increasing the stretch particularly on the lower hamstring closer in toward the knee Regardless of where our hands are, as we go into Gorilla, we're going to make an adjustment so we can bend through the elbow. So if our hands are no lower than our shins, we're just going to slide our hands around to the back of our legs, thumbs toward the outside. If we can easily reach the floor, we're going to pick up the toes of one foot, turn the palm up and slide that hand underneath so our toes are coming near our wrist. We'll do the same thing on the other. Oh, regardless of where we have our hands now, we're going to try and pull the elbows out to the side. So we're constantly increasing that stretch down through the legs. Our gorilla pose. And then we're going to plant both hands on the floor. We're going to step back one foot so that we can come into a lunge. And we can work with this pose a little bit. We can just hold it and press down as hard as we can into the floor until we're feeling that stretch all the way up the leg. Or we can bend the knee, do a little bit of genuflexion, seeing if we can feel a little bit more work on the upper part of the leg. And then we're going into our Paschimottanasana, or our intense side stretch. So we're going to take our back foot, we're going to step it forward, and we're going to start to make sure that we're aligning correctly. So we're going to stand up tall first, stretching through the spine, Feet are parallel directly in the same direction as if we were standing on railroad ties. We're going to do our same pelvic tilt, but we're keeping the weight flat across the feet, so we should be able to pick up our toes, making sure we're not rocking on the toes. Pushing the hips back, keeping them even, making sure we don't start twisting to the side. We do our pelvic tilt. Hands are going to land where the hands can go, either resting on our thigh, down on our shin, or if we can, all the way to the floor. We think about trying to push the hips a little further back, getting that stretch, particularly on that front leg, down around the knee, into the hamstring. If it's not intense enough for us, we can start walking our hand back toward our back foot, seeing if we can feel a little bit more of that stretch. And then pressing into our feet, standing tall. We're going to come into our triangle pose. So we're going to step our back foot even further away. We want our feet a comfortable distance apart. The front foot's pointed directly toward the front. The back foot's turned at an angle toward the front. We want stability more so than we want the distance between the legs. We're going to stand up nice and tall. We're going to take our front hand and push it into our groin so we can get our hips back as far as we can and already feeling that stretch through the hamstring as we come down. We're going to end up with our spine parallel to the floor, our front hand resting where it can on our leg or the ground, and top hand lining with the bottom. 
working on bringing the shoulder back, but this is all about stretching through this hamstring by keeping the hips pushing back. We're going to drop both hands down. We're going to rotate on our feet, coming around to face the front. And as we turn, we might decide that we want to walk our feet a little further apart. We want to heel and toe, but then we want to make sure that we end up so that our feet are either directly forward or slightly at an angle. We do not want the feet turning out because that puts too much work onto the knees. So we make sure that we get the feet aligned. We make sure that we keep the hips back that we're not coming forward, that our feet are flat on the ground, that we don't have all the weight on the big toe side of the foot. And we think about tightening the quadriceps, pushing back against the hamstring as we slowly lower our head lower and lower into the ground. Some of us may be able to get our elbows on the floor. Some of us want to stay in our hands. Some of us may be able to get the crown of the head all the way down to the ground. That's not important. What's important is that we feel stable, that we're getting the stretch we want through the hamstrings. And if we'd like to stretch the back a little more, we can do the variation of walking the hand straight forward without moving the hips out of alignment. If we want to loosen up a little bit more to the midsection, we can always take this to our twisting pose or windmill, turning around toward one side before we lift the hand and then going to the other. Or if we just want to concentrate on the stretch of the hamstring, we can keep facing toward the front and trying to lower down further and further and further as we hold the pose. We'll heel into our feet closer together so we get them apart. We'll rotate our hands over toward the opposite side so that we can come into our lunge on this side. And again, we can do any variation that we'd like. We can lift and lower the heel to get more stretch to the back of the leg. We can drop the knee to the ground. We can take this to our warrior one and a half if we'd like by stacking shoulders over hips and bringing the arms up. And then we're going into our half pyramid pose. So we're gonna bring our weight forward onto our front foot. We're gonna step our feet so they're parallel to each other. We don't have them in heel alignment, but we have them parallel. We shift our weight back. Our feet are about two or three feet apart. We're going to put our hands on our hips to make sure that we don't twist to one side or the other as we do our hip hinge, coming down lower and lower, keeping the weight well back, pushing our hips back, bringing the hands down either to our thigh, to our shin, or all the way to the floor. Trying to move backward with the hips to increase that stretch on the back of the legs. We're aiming for the hamstring mostly. And then into our triangle. So again, when we do our triangle, we want a comfortable distance between the feet. We think about taking our front hand and pushing those hips back as far as we can get them. Trying to increase the stretch to the back of this front leg as much as possible before we bring our head even with our hips our hand wherever is appropriate, shoulders stacking over each other as we lift, top hand up toward the sky. And then slowly bringing that hand down to the floor. We're going to rotate on our feet, get our hands planted in alignment with the shoulders so we can step our feet back and then push our tailbone up to the sky. We're in our down dog. That's supposed to be stretching the entire back of the body. But if we're up too high on our toes, we're going to miss the stretch we want to the lower legs. So we think about picking up the toes, getting well onto the balls of the feet, pressing through the entire foot. We think about pushing shoulders down toward our toes so we don't have a bend through the shoulders. We're getting an adequate stretch across the entire back as we tighten the abdominals and feeling that stretch through the upper legs, strengthening around the knees. Then we're going to come down, drop to the floor, and come into our staff pose. So we're going to swing our legs around to the front. We're going to flex through the feet, so we're still working on 
the entire legs. But if we tighten the quads, we're gonna feel those hamstrings stretching coming lower into the ground. We're gonna plant our hands on the floor and get our spine as long as we can possibly get it in our staff pose. Now we're gonna trust stretch even more through the back of the body by going into our Paschimottanasana. We start with our hip hinge, we start with the abdominals tightening down into our thighs. As we come down, we don't wanna be rounding and leading with the shoulders. We want the upper part of the torso to be the last thing that comes down. We're bringing our heart down toward our knees and then we can either walk our hands slowly across the top of our legs or the sides of our mat as we eventually reach as far forward as possible, maybe holding onto the toes, maybe holding onto the sides of the feet. And if we easily reach the feet, thinking about bending the elbows and giving ourselves more of a bend down. But if we forget about tightening the quads, pushing through the heels, we're gonna lose the stretch that we want through the back of the legs. We're gonna keep it more into the lower back and the shoulders. slowly releasing our hands and sitting up. We'll take this to our Janner Shusasana, so we're gonna straighten out one leg. We're gonna bend the other one and pull that heel as tight as we can in toward our tailbone. We're gonna work the muscles of the bent leg so that we can get that knee as close to the ground as possible. We're sitting up nice and tall. We're going to do our hip hinge again now so we can increase the stretch on the hamstring. We're thinking about tightening that quad as we bring the tight abdominals down into our leg. The more we can do that, the more we're getting the entire upper thigh into the ground, and the further forward we can stretch. And then we'll slowly sit up and switch to the opposite side. So we straighten the opposite leg, we bend up, and we think again about trying to get this knee as close to the floor by working the muscles on the outside of the hip, the outside of the leg. We think about lining up our midline with our long leg, but increasing the work that's being done in the quad is going to help stretch that hamstring. Flexing the foot will help stretch the lower part of the leg. Our hip hinge forward, coming down as low as we'd like but trying to get the belly in toward our leg first before we start walking the hands forward up toward our foot. Taking our time, recognizing that the muscles will get more and more relaxed. The slower we go, the longer time we spend in the pose. So we increase our range of motion by looking at nice slow movements. And then releasing our hands and sitting up. We're going to bend our knees and roll down to our back. We're going to come into our dead bug. So we think about lying down with a nice straight spine, walking our heels outside our hips. Then we're going to pull our knees in toward our chest. We're going to bring our index fingers behind our knees, thumbs toward the outside. We're going to pull those knees as far as we can. So the inner thighs are resting against the rib cage. Our knees are coming down by our armpit. Then we're gonna take one foot up to the sky, right over the knee. We'd like the foot not to be down toward our sit bones. We'll do the same thing with the opposite leg. We can stay here, continually pulling down, really bringing those knees lower and lower into the ground. Or if we'd like, we can bring our arms between our feet, wrapping two fingers and a thumb around the big toe or holding onto the outside of the feet we're still trying to keep our back as flat as we can on the floor. We're pulling our shoulders down, pulling those knees tighter in and feeling more and more of a stretch across the hamstrings as we do that. If we're feeling any tension, we can just rock a little side to side. And then we're going to slowly lower one foot all the way to the ground. We can have the leg bent or straight, doesn't matter. We're going to straighten out the other leg, straight up to the sky. Grip of choice. So if our arms are short, we might want to hold on to the back of the leg, or we can put two fingers and a thumb around the big toe, or just hold on to the outside of the foot. 
but we're trying to pull that foot constantly closer and closer toward our head. Not directly over the hip, if we can add a little bit more to it so that we can increase that stretch down the back of the leg. Working a little bit more, dropping it out to the side so that we're getting a stretch on the inner part of the hamstring as well as the back of the hamstring, bringing that leg slowly lower and lower into the ground. Foot back up to the sky, dropping the foot to the floor, and doing the same thing on the opposite side. So either with the leg we were just working with, the foot flat on the floor, straightening out the leg, our choice to make, we're going to take off that opposite leg, either take two hands to the back of the thigh, two hands to the back of the calf, or holding on to our foot. But we're trying to get that foot closer and closer in toward our head so that we can make this hamstring longer and longer and longer. And then slowly bringing it out to the side. Taking our other hand out directly from our shoulder as a counterweight, making sure that the shoulders and the hips on both sides don't come off the floor. And then releasing our hand, bringing our legs together. If we'd like to, we can take ourselves to a spinal twist, our legs bending and dropping down. Arms out from our shoulders on either side. Staying here for a few minutes and then switching to the opposite side. We can come directly into corpse pose. We can go on to other choices of poses if we'd like. We can end this session or just sit quietly for a few minutes doing a little bit of meditation and then stretching the arms high to the sky, palms down to heart center. Now.